currently in comic books, Tom King's Batman run has been very divisive. And for me, I feel like I either really like it or I really, really don't. And the things that I really, really don't in the moment, yes, they bother me because I, I love the character and, and he's a big part of my life, whether I want to admit it or not. What's up? And you are watching Beside the Point here on Nerdy Blurb TV. Today, we've got a cool episode for you. We're going to be talking about comic books and what we like about them, but also any of our pet peeves that we have. Maybe is there a problem in the comic uh, community? Is there something that, that we might want to get off our chest? We're going to do that today, so stay with us. Presented by None of This Really Matters, this is Beside the Point here on Nerdy Blurb TV. I'm Ryan, and I'm joined here with another YouTuber who is a huge fan of comic books, or at least that's what I believe so, because he uh, <laughs> talks a lot about comic books. This is Dark Knight Nation. Tell us a little bit about you and your channel, man. Well, hey, man. First of all, I want to say thank you for having me on. I feel like this has been kind of a, a long time coming. Um for as long as I've been on YouTube, at least. So I appreciate, you know, having the, you having me on. So what I do, you know, like you had kind of given a forward to, I review and discuss comic books. Uh, I have a weekly to bi-weekly show called Comics Pull List, where I take three books that came out within the last month. Um, we do a little summary on the story, what's on, some of the characterization, and then I discuss and review them and give them a rating. And the reason I do three is that so that you can get an understanding of, of where these books kind of scale in quality to one another. And I talk about um, kind of applying a level of activity to declaring how good a comic is, how bad it is. Although, you know, every, everything is ultimately subject to sub subjectivism. So uh, I occasionally I do movie reviews, but it's mostly comic book discussions. And then I do uh, um, a live stream discussion with uh, my normal partner in co crime, Comic Boom, every week. Awesome. And and that's really cool, too, because uh, any of you who have not seen his his YouTube channel, he knows his stuff. So whether it's subjective or not, you're getting it from an, uh, what I like to think is an expert in the comic book community. Dark Knight Nation, that's go right. check out his YouTube channel. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on the show. When you had said that, like, we need to collaborate and everything, I was so down for it. But like, the thing is, is, is that trying to figure out what we wanted to talk of what I wanted to talk about with you what I was a little hesitant because there's a lot of things that I want to talk about when it comes to comic books and how I think not only is it affecting just our our culture in general but like maybe some things that I may have some pet peeves about and you are cool to be like yeah I'll totally talk to you about it because there are some people out there that are like oh I don't know if I want to touch that subject so like I appreciate you coming on man no, I, I, you know, I think the only way to promote any sort of community around a topic or a, a, a storytelling especially is just to be somewhat, you know, open. You will always have some things that are a little bit out there and you'll have things that from your perspective will feel even more out there. But being able to discuss and even agree to disagree sometimes, sometimes isn't a bad thing, a bad way to go about it. You know, uh, there will also be times where I may persuade you, you may persuade me and that's fine too. You know, um comic books just like anything else like i said before are subjective some people feel like some stories touch them you know in a more intense way than others do so that's that's what it's all about man being able to have chill civil discussions about the things that we both love you know totally and i i appreciate it again so let's let's just get into it i want to start things off on a positive note not that things may or may not turn negative it's just that i love comic books you love comic books let's talk about that i mean Comic books in, in general have been around for a long time. And the coolest thing that I think that I love about comic books is that like they are very much indigenous to America. And that it's, oh, yeah. it's some of like it's some it's it is our culture, it's our tradition. And and America can't claim a lot of that stuff outside of maybe jazz and American football, you know, but comic books. Uh, agreed. Yeah, comic books are like a huge staple in in our in our culture, and I that has got to be one of the number one things that I love about comic books in general. Tell us a little bit about 
like why comic books resonate with you or, or why they're just something that you have a passion for? You know, I just feel like comics are so versatile media. Uh, I can tell a story. Not only do you have the literature behind it and the scripting, you have the visual interpretation of the script via the artist. And over the years, you know, I've come to appreciate and, and you look at the the chronological evolution of comic books and how, yes, it serves its purpose for children and the younger age groups. But nowadays, the, the larger comic book market is for adults and it's high art storytelling. Even, you know, Marvel and DC that their start and, and a large majority of their publishing career doing these big bombastic stories with stuff that you'd never see and, and just this crazy out of this world, you know, concept, which is great. And that pioneered the, just storytelling in general. But what I love is, is how we've evolved to a point where we can get a, a great murder mystery story with complex twists and turns with Batman in it. And, and, and again, we'll, you know, like we'll touch into later about how that'll permeate pop culture and Hollywood, amongst many other things you know one of the my biggest examples i like to give and how pop co or comic books as a medium have permeated the larger storytelling medium in in film is that you look at Logan, it doesn't feel like a wolverine movie it's a neo-western with wolverine in it and that's one of the things i love so much about it is comic books aren't a genre it's a type of storytelling medium and i that's a common misconception i see a lot on the interweb on the interwebs and, and such so absolutely i think you said a lot of things there that i can definitely relate to because like first off comic book everybody should know that comic books are for all ages for everybody and and it, it's even cooler because the people who were young when comic books were at like when the stigma fit comic books were only for kids those kids have now grown up and those are the guys who are writing those are the men and women who are writing the comic books nowadays and it's cool because they have evolved and so has their taste in what they love and it's really cool to be able to be in this world and and live with something that it with a medium like comic books with the text and the visuals to be able to relate to me personally i love comic books because reading not really my thing like i'm i'm so adhd i can't focus on on a page or anything it's always audiobook or uh comic books and because the comic books first off i love the artwork i love being able to appreciate somebody's way of telling a story through the art that they uh create plus like you said there's just awesome awesome stories that and, and in my, this is totally my, my opinion, but sometimes there, there are mediums that can't tell a story the way a movie can or a book can. Uh, and, and, and possibly there's a way that, uh, that comic books can't tell, uh, stories that everybody, everything's got their own way of telling a story and comic mm -hmm. books. It just hits it for me. I think it's really cool how, how we can have, like you said, Batman in a murder mystery and, and just, uh, jump, jump, jump genres and different types of storytelling within all of this really cool uh, culture that we do have. Awesome. Well, these, these characters are so versatile, you know. And this is me, I guess, speaking more generally about the more popular and iconic characters, mainly like Marvel and DC. Um, but in particular, you know, these characters and the iconicism behind them represent so much for American culture now. Culture and we have such a, a high speed communicative you know global society they span the world you know um I, I did an interview with a writer and his name is brian edward hill really nice guy and one of the things he talked about her, he was overseas and a kid saw him with a superman shirt and gave him a hug like that's powerful there's something so powerful about that and like what these these characters as symbols represent you know for me and and, and I get really corny and like really into this stuff, probably more than I should. But, you know, these characters mean something to people. And there's a reason that a good majority of them have lasted for 50, 60, 70, 80 years. Because they're not only entertaining, but they mean something. They, they manifest some level of, of humanity or, or – so, you know something that humanity wants to become and mythology they they didn't do so much and then 
in in mod, you know, more modern comic books, you have independent titles that can just tell these crazy stories and and add different flavors of intellectualism or curiosity or a number of different things. So I the just medium itself can do so much. It's absolutely true. I think that's it says a lot when when someone can can relate to I mean, this goes for anything like uh, I'm a Boston Red Sox fan and I'll wear a Boston Red Sox hat and see somebody from across the room who is wearing the same one. And there's just like there's like a brotherhood there. Like that's totally I totally get that. But like there's something I don't want to say different, but there's something very similar to that, that brotherhood or that family aspect when it comes to Superman and Batman and and Spider-Man of, of all these these fictional characters to be able to bring us as a culture together whether that be here in this country or in the world and that that's power that's power that money can't buy uh it's 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 something that that has to be around for a really long time which comic books have i mean superman has been around i mean i'm not good at the statistics but he's been around for like a century 80 right? years 80 years look at that that's crazy and for him to be as huge as he was back then 75 80 years ago it it's it blows my mind and i think what's really cool about the the superhero genre of these comic books is that they they can be who we cannot be like like i can't fly i don't have freeze breaths all that kind of stuff but like superman can and I can be transported in that world. And he can be, to some people, the brother that they never had, the father that they never had, any of that kind of stuff. I totally get that. But with the independent titles as well, I feel like are really, I don't want to say overlooked because there's a lot of people who read independent titles. But there's a lot of mediums out there that I think resonate with a lot of people. And there are stories being told that are are not seen anywhere else i think it's really cool what the comic book community can give back to the readers oh i 100 percent agree you know comic books like we said before are for everybody and the beautiful thing about comic books are even if for example there's a book that you don't like being you know ongoing about a character that you love you know that's fine because you'll eventually get another book with that character that you like that you will like you know, comic books are very, very cyclical, like most things out there. And, um, you know, the availability to to let anybody of any age, of any sex, of any ethnicity, of any whatever, access this material is awesome. Because that's, and this is one of the things of storytelling to do, especially in the public eye. You know, it's, and it, like the, the versatility, not only in that, but in the type of storytelling you do, you know, you go back to the 60s and you get this really big bombastic jack kirby cosmic storytelling but then you know you go into the more modern age with frank miller bringing grit back to comic books and this sense of reality and 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 uh politics you know th there's so much you can do and i i think that, you know there are only two other mediums that can rival it and that is film and, and novels and prose you know the not no other medium to me besides those three can have that level of versatility and still be good i absolutely agree that's really cool i like how you put that i with all of that being said like i i want to like gradually move into the next topic because i think it fits here is that the biggest pet peeves that i have with comic books is that i feel like and you may or may not disagree with me here. I feel like they're so underappreciated. I feel like uh, the stigma that comes with it, like, oh, only dorks and kids read those. I feel like is, I don't want to say that it's coming at, like flatly coming out and, and hurting the, the community. But I feel like, I feel bad for so many of those people because like they don't know what they're missing out. And that's a huge pet peeve of mine because I'll sit there and read a comic book at work and I'll hear I'll hear it for the rest of the day. It's like, oh, I work with a I work with a child or or whatever, and it doesn't get to me. I don't care because I'm reading a way better book than than they're not. But like the thing is, is that the stigma that comes with comic books is a huge pet peeve of mine because I I 
comic books are literally for everybody. Like there are sports comic books. There are, I mean, there, there, there are kid comic books, but there are like LGBTQ comic books. There are, uh, like the Archie comic books, comedy, mystery, so, so many different. I mean, if, if you can think it, it's out there. Or if you can mm. think it, you can definitely get it out there. That's what's so great. 100%. That's what's so great, and not to mention, that's a big rub that I have with comic books. So my question for you is, why do you think that is, and how do you think like that'll change over time? Do you think we've gotten there? Do you think we've gotten to a point to where the, stig- the stigma has been lowered with comic books? I, I feel like there is a certain leveling of the stigma in modern times. Um, but if you look at the history of comic books, you know, they were originally invented for a younger audience and and with that being said you know we will never have more people reading comic books than than you know the height of the golden age because there's so much competition in media right now you know you can you know play a video game you can go on the internet play whatever you can watch youtube you can watch a film you can stream it anywhere you can do so much you know back then medium was the most common you had newspapers and comic books and and when you have such you know millions on top of millions on top of millions of people reading superman at one time it it generates this stigma that this is for those people and you know you see the colors and i feel like when you have some sort of um uh geez illustration with literature it tends to to have this bad rap behind it when most people don't the time of day to go check it out you know when you talk to people about the marvel films that are so incredibly successful worldwide they don't want to pick up a book where all of this comes from like it it, i that's something that i never understood because for me when these movies started coming in you know the the early like sam raimi spider-man films or the chris nolan batman films or even you know when i was young and i was watching batman 1989 for the first time i was like where does this come from I was genuinely interested to see where this came from. And then, you know, you there again, it, the the social the socialization of the stigma behind comic books is so prevalent as even my not this is for kids. And so by the time I was like 15 or 16, you know, for me, I, I found comic books by chance, although I was interested in the films. I was at a friend's house. You know, he had a power outage. We were chilling in his, in his attic. His, his dad had a bunch of like old 80s and 90s comic books and i read the dark knight returns and that changed my entire perspective on comic books it's like this is for everybody comic books isn't a genre it's a medium because there's so much you can do with it it's so much bigger than a genre you know what i mean and and for for dark for example dark knight returns highly political highly intellectual highly psychological so many intelligent concepts in that book but at the same time you still get batman beating you know the life out of superman and and the the gang of mutants you know what i mean they use the characters at universe as a mechanism to tell an adult story and that's the thing that most people don't understand especially nowadays with independent comic books where a lot of these people are just looking to tell an end like their own story and they're looking to craft it's not always necessarily for children. You know, you read stuff like Gideon Falls by Jeff Lemire or Witches by Scott Snyder. Those books are not meant for kids. They are adult stories. They are mature. I don't even want to say adult because there are children who are at a level that are capable of reading it. They are mature stories, you know? And I think the more that people like you and me and, and, and others on the internet go out there and say, like, listen, like, we're grown men. We read these books. We're ashamed of it because there's nothing shamed of because these are these stories just as legitimate as anything you read in a novel and that's why books like the watchman are in the rolling stones top 100 novels of all time absolutely it's one of my if not my favorite comic book or pieces of literature ever it's one of the best and oh uh, yeah and it's really cool to be able to see like you had said like there is a lot of competition when it comes to media but it's it's cool to live in a time especially like right now when it's it's a huge boom for comic oh, yeah. books to be appreciated but the the problem is is like you said that people are not taking the time to see where this originates from and therein lies my second pet peeve not with the people 
But I was one of those people, like you, but mine was different. It was uh, Iron Man. I had always known about Iron Man. 2008 rolled in, and Marvel's Iron Man came, and I thought, I would, I loved that movie. I would love to learn more, but here's the crazy thing that Marvel's doing is they, they took a, a relatively an unknown character compared to a lot of their other titles and made him big almost overnight. It was crazy. So first off, I had no idea where to start with Iron Man. And second off, there wasn't a lot. I mean, there is. There, He's a, a, a timeless character. But there wasn't a lot at the time or at my disposal to be able to, to look at that. And so my biggest pet peeve is, especially when I was trying to get into it, is the continuity to all of these characters is ridiculous. It blows my mind, like especially with someone like Batman. When Batman Begins comes out, I already, I had already felt like I I knew Batman because I had this huge thick book that like told me all of his like 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 here's the bare minimum that you need to know about Batman. But the thing is, is that it bothered yeah. it bothered me so much that I had to read that huge thick book as if it was like like I just skipped a lot of steps on on how to know who Batman is you know I didn't get to actually read those stories I just read the anthology of Batman mm. so it's like my biggest pet peeve is like where the heck do you start and why why is continuity taking like why is it so crazy like nowadays like like with the new 52 back uh, a couple of years ago that DC did that was great and I loved that in fact Batman Court of Owls is probably my favorite title of all time. And I know that you did a video on on that very recently. I love the Court of Owls. <laughs> right, right? It's so amazing. And it was cool because I knew that I could just jump in on here. So with that being said, like like why why is it that that comic books, like especially Marvel and DC, why have they taken their continuity? to a whole other confusing level especially for anyone who wants to get in to reading comic books so the thing about continuity is it's a reward for people that have been in it for the long game and now that i've become that person i love it and i think i always loved it even when i was trying to get into comics because i was one of those people that saw big continuity you know this gets me excited because there's so much behind this there's this universe a multiverse you know even about these characters that i don't even know about and i can understand because it does get into you know, with characters like batman you know where right now in detective comics it's approaching it's 900 and and 80th and 90th issues you know but there are certain points that are easier to access the characters and i think with the beauty of the internet it's a little bit easier to find that some people will kind of um subjectively put like this is my favorite batman story and you should start here no but you will always find people that know where to start and can be hard to differentiate between when you're the one trying to to figure out where to go but the thing i will say is this that for example the court of owls one of my favorite batman stories of all time technically is not really accessible because if you think about it there's a lot of continuity established behind it because when they rebooted in the new 52, Batman and Lantern really touched by the reboot because they were so popular. You know, Batman is Batman. So when you pick up the new 52, Nightwing is already or Robin. The first Robin's already Nightwing. Tim Drake is is doing is Red Robin. He has Dame Wayne who Wayne wasn't introduced up until like 2005, 2006, maybe seven or eight, seven or eight. I'm sorry, it was like seven or eight. Um, and, and the premise of Court of Owls was Batman coming back from Batman Inc. Again, another huge storyline, pre-New 52, that permeated the New 52. But that comic was still so accessible to people who weren't into it. Did you need to know all that stuff? Not really. Does it make it better if you know that stuff? Hell yeah, it does. But, you know, I feel like there's always going to – you talk to the right people and you, you talk with the, enough people – They'll give you an idea of where to start. It's I feel like it's taking the um, uh, taking the uh, what am I the initiative to go and talk to people and ask like how do I get into Batman? Where do I start? Because for me, Court of Owls was one of my I would say one of my first like ten Batman I ever read. 
My first full thing that I ever read was Final Crisis. And that entire book is like out of this world crazy and nuts. And I'm sure most people would have gotten scared. But the fact that I didn't understand made me like, whoa, I want to understand every bit of this. And I've been reading comic books now for, you know, five, six years. And I still don't completely understand it. And I kind of love it because I feel like there's always more for me to go back and get into. And every time I go back to that book, I was just like, oh, I get this now. And it just adds something. You know, when I, I reread Court of Owls for maybe the fourth or fifth time when I went to do that video and I was still something i was still learning something new about the book that made it even better for me and it's like you always get worried that you read you reapproach something that you've loved and you're afraid that somehow your opinion of it will be tarnished my appreciation and love for that book has only gotten better because there are certain thematics that writer in that case scott snyder throws in that book that i i didn't pick up on the first time because i was too focused on picking up on like the broad narrative you know so it might just be my perspective on on how i approach I love the concept of continuity. There are some characters that are really just not accessible. For example, you know, Iron Man doesn't have a lot of great stories. And there are a lot of stories that kind of get thrown to the wayside that are good that nobody talks about. But I feel like it just comes down to really, really taking the initiative and talking to enough people that, that love comic books it's like you want to. So wouldn't you say, uh, and, and humor me a little bit, wouldn't you say that something like that, taking the initiative, which I totally agree with you, people should take the initiative, that's what I did, but not everybody is like me or you, don't you think that that's where a lot of people like don't hop on to the wagon because like it, it, it first off it is intimidating and second off it is like a daunting task, not to mention continuity like for you to get a huge payout, it sounds like you have to read so much to be able to get that awe-inspiring moment. And I feel like a lot of people would just rather like read one or two trades or whatever. And that's fine. That's cool. But I feel like they're, first off, they're not getting the full experience. But second off, is this the, the experience? Is this what's actually deterring people? Like, how many people do you run into who just give up on it because it's not paying out? Oh, oh plenty. But the thing I think is in, in the digital age where information travels faster than you could even think of, you know, um, it's a lot easier to access stuff like that. For me, for example, you know, I like maybe two, three years ago, I knew nothing about Green Lantern. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, it's this big space opera. Um, that's essentially like DC's Star Wars, but obviously way different. Um, and I just looked up a list. I was like, well, where do I start Green Lantern? And I just followed the list and I got, and it, it, like, at the, uh, like from volume one, I was hooked. I was like, this is great. I really want to know what happens next. Here's what happens next. And now we live in an age where there are like lists all over the end. There are people like me that, you know, that make videos about it. Like, Hey, for example, when I do my, my videos, um, on comics pull list, I, I'm just like, is this a new reader friendly story? You know, um, and I'll say, you know, you can go back and re for example, one of my books I most recently reviewed was Captain America number three. And I was like, go back, reread issues one and two, because we're only on issue three. It'll enhance the story that much more. It is pretty required. Or, for example, I did Adventures of Sons number one, which is a sequel to the DC Rebirth Super Sons book. And I was like, you don't need it. I'd always suggest you read the original Super Sons, but you don't need it to enjoy the story. And with this, you know, outcry of fan, the internet, I think become a lot more accessible for new readers to get into comics, uh, you know, amongst publishing initiatives and rebirths and reboots that try to make things easier to get into, whether or not they do or don't is semantics. But, you know, I feel like there's always some for people who want to get into it to learn a little bit more about how to do it. That's so, and and that's actually something I really love about your channel is that you are you're con you're conscious to those who may be jumping in, whether it's for the first time or or there's so much behind this story. It's really cool. Again, people go check out his channel, Dark Knight Nation. If you're a fan of comic books, especially Batman, go check it out. Greetings, children of the screen. Your friendly neighborhood nerd scum here once again. Now, I don't mean to offend Bill Maher or his fans. I don't know that much about him. I'm agnostic on Bill Maher. But what I will say is that 
Any culture that thinks that the views of a washed up comedian who's only managed to sustain his career by inviting people with more interesting points of view onto his show and then calling them stupid is a legitimate form of sociopolitical discourse is a f dumb culture. But seriously guys, Bill Maher graduated from Cornell with focuses in history and English literature. He's an intelligent person and he's used that intelligence to further his own career and ego by attacking hot button issues. However, this should not be confused for sincerity. I don't believe that Bill Maher doesn't understand that attacking Stanley's legacy and the culture that that legacy helped build is in fact dishonoring his memory. In fact, I feel like that is the only reason why he made the statements that he made. His deliberate, willful ignorance of the importance of Stanley not only to American culture, but world culture, despite the fact that he has all the education and cognitive abilities to be able to analytically discern that, just goes to prove my point. Bill Maher says that he's never read comics and knows very little about Stan Lee. That's obvious and unfortunate, because perhaps if he had, then he would have a greater sense of morality than catering to his own ego, and he would understand that with the kind of notoriety that he is looking for comes great power, and with that power must also come a great responsibility. I really like what you said because about taking the initiative because, yes, that is what people need to do, and I sound like the lazy person saying that maybe that's what the problem is, but like you have to candor to a lot of a lot of people who well, are lazy. It, it, it's a no, bummer no, I, that way. I don't disagree with you at all. You know, I think the the general, for example, movie going fan that sees these characters on the silver screen and want to get into it, they're like, I just I want simple solution, and that's the world we live in today. We want the quickest solution to our problem, and you know, that's why, for example, me doing comic book YouTube. And, Obviously, I'm a smaller channel, but like that's what I'm going for. I'm looking to try to make this something that people can can look at and be like, okay, either a maybe this is worth the work, or maybe I'm doing the work for you. Where where to start? You no, know, and you know where to jump off. You know, like I I've done one video so far, but I did like top five four new readers, and it's and it will focus around particular characters. And I did Batman first. Um, in, if you guys ever end up checking it out for quality because it's pretty bad. But, you know, I go into detail about these are these are five stories that you can read in this order to get a broad sense of, of continuity in Batman. But also these are five stories that will show you who this character fundamentally is. When I'm when I make the decision to recommend books to a new reader, say five books like that, I try to find something that you can say, OK, this is Batman really early in his career. This is a little bit more seasoned Batman. This is a Batman who's been doing it for a little bit. And here are the challenges that he faces at each step that that help you to explore the fundamentals behind who that character is. You know, um, like I said, the, the beauty of it, we live in a digital age where someone like me or, or some, you know, or others can put that information out for those who are interested. Absolutely. That is an awesome video. That's probably one of my favorite videos because of just the content in there. So that's way cool. I totally look forward to I appreciate it, man. more of those. Yeah, absolutely. Um, something else that I wanted to bring up that uh, I think would be an interesting conversation. I mean, there's a lot of things that bother me, uh, but they all stem back to the same like genre or medium if you want to call it that and it's the, it's the superhero genre now i may get a lot of flack mm -hmm. with that but i i really don't i don't care because the way that i i like my superheroes is that they are a part of my life yes but there are runs that just suck they just suck and like that's You're not wrong and, and and i'm glad to hear that but like whenever whenever there's a character that i love that just does something that I was like, why? I don't even get why they're doing that, or it's stupid, or if they die and then they come back to life, that's probably my biggest problem with com superhero comic books. But like, the mm. thing is, is that I, I feel like because they have this whole continuity to it, that the writers feel obligated. I mean, it's a huge mantle to uphold. Like, like Batman is, mm. is crazy huge. Wolverine, crazy huge. And he recently just came back to life. So, and and right. it, it makes me feel like, like now, would it, it makes me almost feel like, would it even be better if they just stayed dead and like, just honor the, like, this is a little bit off topic, but like Toy Story 3, great way to end off a series. Yet they're making a Toy Story 4. So it's like, where are they going to go from there? It's like, 
killing off Wolverine and bringing him back to life. It's like, well, now what? You know, like we've done so many other things. Why can't we just move on with a new character? And that's kind of where, what I'm trying to see. Is it is it really is it the nostalgia factor that really is propelling this community that all of the readers are just so drawn to these certain characters? Or do you think the writers are so attached to these characters that they don't dare write any other thing which is totally a stipulation because a lot of other comic book writers write a lot of other things i'm just trying to get right create a conversation about that uh, so i'm i'm gonna uh, i guess all of your comments in order so i don't forget them um you had mentioned you know something happening with a character in continuity that particular thing you don't really love the beautiful thing about comics are a lot of people will have own head canon you know like for me right now technically year one didn't happen in comic books but like like forgive my friends my, forgive my friends i could give a shit whether or not someone tells me year one is or isn't in continuity because that is fundamentally the batman origin story for me and you also have a lot of situations where things can get retconned and i will bring, um uh, for example the sam raimi spider-man films to you right you're a big film guy Spider-Man one and two are solid films spider-man three was not does the fact that Spider-Man 3 was bad and did some weird things with the character make Spider-Man 1 and 2 any worse? No. So you can still love those movies, you can still love the characters, and, and you can still love everything about it. You can, for all I care, you could love Spider-Man 3. But looking at it from that lens, just because something, for example, currently in comic books, Tom King's Batman run has been very divisive. And for me, I feel like I either really like it or I really, really don't. And the things that I really, really don't in the moment, yes, they bother me because I, I love the character and, and he's a big part of my life, whether I want to admit it or not. Um, but I've learned to live with the, the fact that it's all, you know, some this can get retconned, which would be the best option. But I can also just think to myself, that's not my Batman and that's fine. You know, like I said, comic books are very cyclical in their narrative, in the characters and and you will eventually get back to the thing that you love most you know um so that that's to event uh, to 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 hit that first topic um what was the i'm trying to think what was the one you had brought up people dying in comic books i i think that there's a very fine line of characters who should and characters who shouldn't stay dead and that could just totally be a personal opinion you know for me um the Waynes always stay dead, unless it's an Elseworld story. I think Elseworld stories are fair game to do whatever the hell you want to do, because I think that there's something really cool in people being able to take these mechanisms or these machines that, or, or the universe, and, and put one spin on affecting this continuity that people like myself love. You know, Uncle Ben should always be dead. But I think there are situations of characters who were better characters when they came back than they were dead and before they died. I love Red Hood. Whether or not people have always handled him correctly, the character as a whole, I think, is an awesome idea because him being him, Jason Todd, for those of you who don't know, is the second Robin and was killed by the hands of the Joker and has largely considered Batman biggest failure. Right? He lost a Robin. He lost one of his children. And when like obviously death will always be a constant reminder, but when Jason comes back, Red Hood, this vengeful, you know, undead man who is out to uh, he, he's not really out to kill batman but he's out to prove a point and he's out to seek validation from what batman did and and that is a an even bigger you know character study on batman because it's now this is literally in your face you cannot even think about forgetting about it because this guy is alive he's walking around and he's potentially trying to kill you and, and it's not even life or death situation it's the fact that your biggest failure will always be there and you can never forget about it. What do you do now? You know? Um, so I think that there are really creative and interesting ways to take comic book deaths. I will say I generally agree that, that they overdo the whole death and, and comeback thing. Um, I think Wolverine should have stayed dead for longer. For example, uh, I was really digging Laura Kinney. I think that she's an awesome character. And I think even in the film, the way they, they use Laura, I, I love that little girl i think daphne something um was the the child actress but um uh, i digress the death there's a lot of things about death but i think largely those are things that you can again kind of ignore 
Uh, I don't have a 100% foolproof answer because I, I do think that oftentimes the death and revival or death and like retconning that a never died can get way overdone. But in the hands of a really great writer and storyteller, you can take those deaths and turn the revivals or the retconning of them having never died and make it something great. You know, again, using that situation with Red Hood, um, Ed Brubaker's Winter Soldier was phenomenal. You know, what Jeff Johns, for example, wasn't necessarily a death, um, but what Jeff Johns did with, with Hal Jordan and Parallax and how he wasn't just being a dick, he was being taken over by this entity of fear. Um, so I, I think when handled right, they can be great. But that is just one of the, the downfall of storytelling and comic books. In general, every single medium has things that that are, are just the the burnt spots, you know. See, and I really I really like what you had said to all of that because Red Hood, him coming back is probably like I don't even consider that like I as as like a, a dead and come back to life trope. It's it's it was something that Batman honestly really had to face, and I thought it was amazing i i loved it and so i have to agree with you there but like i do agree with you it, it is done a lot and i agree with you that like there are ways that it can be done correctly and there are ways that it can definitely go south and we've seen that many times and like right. for me to like i mean like what i'm what i'm really getting at it, like to wrap all of these pet peeves up in a bow is that i am very much an independent reader like I, I love, like, not, not to say that I don't love continuity, because I, I do. I just, I've enjoyed it with independent titles so much more so, because I, I'm so much more of a fan when it comes to origin stories. Like, uh, I'm reading Wonder Woman's or, origin right now, and it's the one that's out of continuity. So great. So so good. And like, one? The Reaper, sorry, what was that? Was it, is it one, uh, like, by Grant Morrison? Wonder Woman Earth 1, or...? No, it's um, I I can't remember the title. I just barely picked it picked it up again. I'll have to put it in the details below. But it's it's one where she is born from the island, and the island has a sickness, and she can feel that. And I love that whole concept. But in some of hers, she's not born from the island. She's not born out of clay. She's born from from Zeus, and and like those are different. But like you had said, I can. I can separate myself by saying that, yeah, Spider-Man 3 sucked, but that doesn't mean the other ones suck either. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that any of those Wonder Woman titles suck either. I just like being able to reimagine these wonderful characters. And I'm worried that so many people are, are, are so many writers are, are conflicted by wanting to stay in continuity and also not wanting to confuse people because i think here's a great example i think the my favorite superman comic book is birthright and there's a whole continuity issue with that too because it's totally out of continuity it 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 changes so much about what we know about lex luther and all of that kind of stuff but it is by far my favorite and they wanted to put it in continuity but there was just so many different things going on, and and the fans were really liking a run that was going on at that time, and and so they thought, eh, get rid of it. But the thing is, is that it's still considered to be one of the best origin stories that Superman has, or I mean, I consider it as an origin story, but it's it's considered to be one of the classics, and I think that a lot of people can relate to to that. I think a lot of people can separate themselves from from saying that. This is not my Superman, or at least this is a totally different story uh, elsewhere. I mean, have you have you read Birthright, by the way? I probably yeah, yeah, I read Birthright was probably one of the first couple of Superman stories I've read. Um, it, it's been quite a while since I've touched on it. But, you know, the, the thing is, everybody, and, and this is a pretty general term um, that comic book fans, everybody, they're here, everybody wants to make the definitive origin for one of these iconic characters and and oftentimes they will differ from from what came before and i think that you know 
there are fine lines because there have been reboots. For example, now technically this is an in continuity or this is and and here and there. You know, it's all it's all hearsay. But the, the cool thing is that you already have such a suspension of disbelief in comics. Why can't you just say like, okay, like I like this part of this origin. Maybe this is my Wonder Woman. And there may be parts of, of the origin that you don't like that have for implicated in continuity. And that's fine. But I think just an open mind to what's going on. You know, for example, um, a big thing, again, Tom King's Batman, War of Jokes and Riddles, I largely don't care about. I don't think it did anything for the character. And as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't exist in my greater history of Batman. Yes, he does. He, it is in Batman's current continuity. But for me, like, I don't care because it doesn't impact who the character is fundamentally. You know, it's about the these these grandiose stories are more or less a way to examine the characters you know um, and I think that as long as your character maintains somewhat similar to how you love them and how a great number of people love them that's the important part you know Superman in in Mark Wade's birthright is still Superman in all-star Superman by Grant Morrison they're just Man at different parts in his continuity or in his career as Superman. And even though, yes, there are things that differ in, in origin, these characters are fundamentally, like, again, in that specific example, that is fundamentally Superman. Both books fundamentally see a side of Superman that is Superman. And, I, you know, I don't think that there's anything to be taken away from that. I totally agree, and I think it, it says a lot with even even myself having these pet peeves that we've talked about, having those pet peeves and still loving these characters, still wanting to read these books. I, I think it says a lot, but like it also says so much about like what our our final topic uh, is is how it's shaping this culture, shaping American culture, if not the world. And I think we covered a lot of it earlier. And it's just that these are characters that we can we can relate to. I, I mean, I can't really relate to a, a billionaire martial artist uh, who puts on a costume at night, but I can relate with the situation that he is placed upon. I mean, if Jason Todd, if somebody, if somebody in my life came back from a huge mistake that I had made, I can relate to that because first off that's right. happened to me before we've all been in a situation like that and i think the way that it's shaping our culture right now is that i mean when it comes to merchandise it's ridiculous but like when it comes to like a whole other medium of telling stories look at what hollywood has been doing lately of of, of late i mean this is like the whole new age of comic books and that is the cinema and whether you want to talk about continuity issues with that, I mean, we could go on and on about how DC or X-Men or any of that kind of stuff is looking very similar to what comic books do when they retcon things. But we we have to examine that and say that like comic books have shaped the media that we that we have today. And I think it's uh, great because I'd love for this medium to be able to get out there more so. Are there any other ways that you think that comic books have shaped our culture today? Well, here's the thing. And and, and this kind of ties back to what you were saying about comic books being the true American art forms. And one of the only things to truly come of America. And it is that these characters, although, you know, they, they've never really been a... They've never really... I, from a theological standpoint, they are America's mythological pantheon. They are what the Greek gods are now to the Greeks. Although we never really had a lot of relig any religious context for them, these can stand for something. They are they are fables that will exist throughout time in a much less literal sense, you know. And I think that one of the issues is that sometimes people read comic books and they take things a little bit too literally, you know. For example. Superman is not relatable because he's he's literally a god amongst men. But here's the thing. If you really and, and that's one of my and I will say I was one of those people. When I first got into comics, I was like a Batman all the time. F Superman. You know, he's unrelatable. He's this dude that came from the sky. And I thought to myself, I was like, that's kind of racist. Like, because he's different, that 
is the thing that, that makes Superman so relatable because he's, he is an outcast trying so hard to be what what everybody in America is to each other. And that is one unified state. I don't even want to say state because that has political implications. But he wants to be a part of this this global community, you know, that are humans. But and it's like it, it deals with so many different thematics, like the fickleness of mankind and, and how you know, we tend to um, associate positive things with people when they do something that benefits us, but when they do something that we can doubt even remotely, we exploit our differences with them. And a lot, a lot of the time, that's what you know they deal with thematics with Superman. And it's funny because ultimately, even though this this guy is an alien, he's he is more human than any of us. With Superman, the views that he displays are more human, and the way he conducts himself is more human than anyone I've ever met, because he he idealizes them and i think we often take those things for granted you know um he and and that's even more powerful he's a god that could do anything power persuades even the best of men and he's not and 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 to be said that because he's not a man he is less than us is wrong because even though he's not a man he lives by the ideals of man better than man does and it's powerful you read all-star superman for example man that'll bring a grown man to tears and it's because Superman's relatable. And, and you think about some of the thematics that we deal with here, that there's no reason to dislike someone because they're different. It's how they, they, they treat you and it's how they act that is that fundamentally defines them. You know, not biology. It's who you all are. And that's one of the biggest thematics that, that runs throughout Superman, for example. And he's a character that people largely say is unrelatable. And, and having, you know, being a little bit more seasoned of a comic book reader, I fundamentally disagree with that now, you know? So, to wrap things up, I think it's safe to say that these characters, these comic book fictional characters, has actually, in some way, made us more human. Or at least hum humanized us more to be better people to each other i think that's awesome yeah, i feel like yeah if you if you're reading them with the proper context you know like i said sometimes a lot of people just read comic books for these stories and they don't really analyze the thematics and that's fine comic books can be different to different people but for me you look at these writers you know they're Sometimes people don't realize how complex some of these stories are that they're implementing just because it involves people in tights. But the the best comic book writers, and there are a number of great writers, who do just that and they craft these amazing stories just using these people in spandex as the mechanism to do it with, you know? Uh, and I, I challenge everybody who's watching this at any point in time to read a comic book and really sit there and think about it. Because oftentimes, again, with stories like Court of Owls, I read that story over and over again, and I learn something new about the thematics that the writer was trying to convey here. And because, you know, creatives tend to be like sponges, sometimes they implement things in the book, uh, different thematics that they don't necessarily intend on, but they're all, but they're there anyways. There's a lot behind them. And uh, I, you know, I, I think that for those of you who are watching this, that, you know, more into the film, uh, the, the film topics that you did, regularly discussing your channel I, I challenge you to read a comic book and really try to sit there and and read it for thematics not just for the story so you heard it here dark knight nation challenging you and all of us here i'll even take it up to read a comic book and actually think about it i like what you said about like it doesn't even matter uh, these are these are hard-hitting topics with people who, yes, are wearing tights. But I can agree with you that there are so many, so many stories that I have read with these characters to where I've actually put myself and say, what would I do in that situation? So if you haven't yet, go check out Dark Knight Nation's YouTube channel. Again, awesome comic book knowledge from this guy and his channel. Go check him out if you are into that. We appreciate you guys taking the time to watch us kind of like talk it out when it comes to our love and maybe a little bit of hate for the comic books 
just a few things I wanted to talk to, to somebody about and get off my chest because these are things that I really think that people should consider when it comes to getting into comic books. I feel like that's exactly what I had when it came to comic books. I didn't want to read them because it was a huge investment, but I decided to take that plunge. Those of you who are wanting to get into that, again, I can't recommend Dark Knight Nation's channel enough. Go check them out. Dude, thanks so much for coming on to, to our show. Really appreciate it. Hey, man. I, I'm I'm really glad you asked me on because I think that a lot of the, the questions and, and, and you know topics that you brought up are, are really pertinent in the community and, and people who are trying to get into comic books. And for me, the, the overall goal of doing what I do is to try to build a community where people can talk about these characters and, and, and love these characters. And that's ultimately why even, you know, times I'll veer off into film because they take these characters that I love and they get to tell different stories with them, you know? So, uh, I, I, again, I appreciate you, you know, being kind enough to have me on and, and having this discussion with me. And, you know, you brought up some really great topics for us to discuss. And I hope that, you know, I was able to at least get you to consider you thought were a little more negative about comic books in light and if not you know that's fine too you can always agree to disagree but um i can't thank you enough for having me on and thank you guys for watching and listening to me babble about picture books <laughs> absolutely man we'd love to have you here again maybe even talk about uh some batman stuff so uh any of, any of you again go check out dark knight nation and those of you who are not not subscribed to our channel Consider subscribing because we talk a lot about nerdy things if that's what you're into. So, from all of us here at Nerdy Blurb TV, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you again. Have a good one, guys.